Welcome everybody to Love Fraud Live. Perhaps you've taken care of everyone but yourself. You may understand that you've been manipulated, abused, or exploited by a sociopath, so it's time to put yourself first. I'm Donna Anderson, author of lovefraud.com, and this is the Zoom event for premium subscribers. You finally figured out that you're dealing with a sociopath, whether it's your partner, a parent, a sibling, or a boss, or even an acquaintance, this person has manipulated, abused, and exploited you. How do you recover? You do what you must. You put yourself first. In this situation, it is perfectly acceptable to be selfish. It may take some time to sort out exactly what is in your best interest and what isn't. The sociopath, after all, causes so much trouble for so many people that their problems may seem to be your problems. Typically, when you're dealing with a sociopath, the situation is complicated. Not only has this person taken advantage of you, but a multitude of other people have also been affected. Still, some problems are not yours to solve. Yes, you can feel badly for others who have been victimized, but their situations should not be your concern, at least not early in your recovery. So here are four groups of people that you should not worry about. The first one, of course, is the sociopath. With his or her sob stories or guilt trips, the sociopath likely made you feel like it was your responsibility to fix his or her life. First of all, recognize that anything this person has said to you could be a lie, including the sob stories, justifications, and excuses. Secondly, Understand that making you feel responsible is a manipulation strategy to convince you to give the sociopath what he or she wants. As you start to withdraw, the sociopath will lay it on thick with requests or even demands like, you're the only one who can help me. Stay strong and do what you need to do. The sociopath may be pleading for your sympathy, but in reality, he or she simply does not want to lose the gravy train. You may fret about hurting the sociopath's feelings, but don't worry about this because the sociopath doesn't have any feelings. Okay, here's the second group of people that you don't want to be concerned about. Many love fraud readers have wondered, should they warn the next victim? Some people say no, it's too dangerous, or they won't necessarily listen. The second group of people who you don't want to worry about when you're uh, dealing with a sociopath is the next victim, the other women or men. So many love fraud readers have wondered, should they warn the next victim? Some people say, no, it's too dangerous, or they won't listen. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that. In my view, I encourage you to at least try to warn the next victim as long as you can do it safely. Again, this is a key point. Put yourself first. If warning the next victim would create any risk for your own safety, recovery, court case, parenting plan, finances, job, or reputation, don't do it. This is particularly important in your escape and recovery. Perhaps later, when your situation has stabilized, you will have an opportunity to warn someone. Still, the basic advice applies. Put yourself first and only warn if you can do it safely. Here's the th third group of people that you really shouldn't be concerned about, the sociopath's kids. Now, you may have become acquainted with the sociopath's children, 
In fact, the sociopath may have recruited you specifically for child care services, although he or she claimed it was true love. Now that you know what the sociopath really is, and you've seen his or her parenting behavior, you may legitimately fear for the children. This is truly sad, but you cannot put the sociopath's children before your own interests. Even if the kids have been living with you, they are not your responsibility. You may have to say a prayer for them and let them go. Finally, number four, group of people to not be concerned about is crime victims. Perhaps you know that the sociopath has been engaged in criminal activity. This may be a situation where you really need to be concerned about your physical safety. Sociopaths have no moral qualms about committing crimes, but they do not want to be held accountable for them. If a sociopath learns that you've turned them in, he or she may retaliate. Even if you've ever seen the sociopath be violent, even towards animals or property, it's a warning that the person could lash out at you. Sometimes cops or prosecutors may promise to protect you if you help them make their case. Be wary. They also put themselves and their careers first. So if something happens and they can't keep their promises, oh well, too bad for you. Maybe the best you can do is submit an anonymous tip. So be it, put yourself first. Now, there's another group of people to consider and these, this is, these are your kids with the sociopath. Now, in my mind, the only exception to the rule for putting your fel yourself first comes for the children that you have with the sociopath. If they are minors, you definitely need to help and support them. Even so, you still need to protect yourself so that you can protect them. That means doing everything you can for your physical, emotional, and psychological health. Sometimes it may mean a tactical retreat from your kids' lives, and I've heard of people who have done that, at least temporarily, until you're strong enough to advocate for them. The stronger and healthier you are, the more you'll be able to help your children. In order to put yourself first, you may need to overcome your conditioning. You may feel really uncomfortable putting yourself first, especially if you grew up with disordered parents. When you're a kid dealing with abusive or controlling parents, learning to be sensitive to their needs, desires, and moods is a survival mechanism. As you grow up, this survival mechanism turns into people-pleasing and self-sacrifice. It also makes you vulnerable to sociopaths. For this reason, you may have a hard time being selfish. It goes against the way you've always lived. But when you're escaping and recovering from a sociopath, it is in your best interest to be selfish. Focus on your physical, emotional, and psychological recovery. Later, when you're in a better place, you can lend a hand to others.